Jimmy. Jim, Jim, Jimmy. Jim, James, son! So finally, as the sun begins to set, I finally got the head off. Um, it fought me tooth and nail. Every single bolt came out until the last one, which this was the last one I took out, and it stripped the head. So I had to jam the 10 millimeter into the nine millimeter hole with a hammer and just sledgehammer it until it um, basically ground itself into the threads forever. And it came out without breaking, so thank God. What I ended up having to do was remove that little metal sheath from this nine millimeter ZXN Capri uh, triple square bit. And I ended up having to like, you know, cut that little shell off and stick it in a standard 10 millimeter socket. And that finally allowed me to it down here between these little grooves yeah there's little grooves here where the lifters are and fit the tool perfectly in there so that I could take all of the head studs out the final one here is the one that ended up stripping and causing me all of that irritants so we have the head off um, it's definitely ugly if we look here cylinders two and three are a little cleaner than cylinders one and four and there's a little shiny spot in between there along with three and four having a small shiny spot and one having, you know, a barely functioning tiny spot. So it looks like the head blew between two and three and then started to creep into three and four. And uh, that's what caused the overall low compression. Uh, another thing I have to do while I already have everything apart is these rings are probably stuck or carboned up, just judging on the deposits in here, like that's caked on. So I'm going to pour a mixture of acetone transmission fluid and berry it's called berryman's b12 and i'm gonna let this sit in these cylinder bores for probably about five days and that will loosen the rings of any gunk that have built up on the rings i know it's kind of hard to see but the cylinder walls look pretty good it doesn't appear to be scoring i don't feel you know any ridges with my fingernail so i think we're gonna get lucky on that front so the next thing I'm just going to do is dump that fluid mixture into each cylinder and take this head over here uh, to a machine shop. And I'm not going to take it to an American machine shop. I'm going to take it into one in Juarez, right across the border. Uh, the American machine shop quoted me $475 to machine this head, which looks like somebody's already been here before. And the one that my friend runs in Juarez, Mexico, wants $125, and he does phenomenal work. So think he's gonna win on that one you can see that the valves all appear other than having some like clear coolant issues they appear to be in good shape and not missing any kind of chunks or anything like that although this one kind of looks a little not great but we'll see when I take it to the machine shop they'll tell me all about it I don't need to know nothing about that right now so for now this can stay here and I will catch up with you guys when I'm more in depth going in here all right i brought the head to work uh, just so i could work on it a little more i took off literally all the sensors that might possibly get broken when they go to machine it and just looked it over so that way i can get ready to take it over there and look at the layer of grime that's like a literal layer of grime from where the washers were sitting <laughs> that's disgusting so this thing definitely needs to be cleaned and machined uh working on a couple of things so one thing i want to show you real quick Let's see if I can get over here. This is a 2015 uh, Ram 1500 Outdoorsman 5.7 liter Hemi. The customer brought this in with a complaint of noise, whatever that means. But one thing I couldn't believe when I saw this, um, look at that oil filter. This is the worst location for an oil filter I've ever seen. Once you loosen it, there's no kind of catch or anything like that. It literally just falls onto the electronic steering rack. Because this is an electric steering rack. So you basically just coat all of this in oil when you go to change the oil on this vehicle which is i don't know that seems stupid to me you know like it's i don't know chrysler that seems like a bad decision on your part but i wouldn't put it past chrysler to be honest so yeah uh, one thing that we do have to do is take this head in and hopefully they can machine it real flat and hopefully they can get it back within the week because i have to order a couple more parts for this i need to order the valve cover gaskets and just a few other things while i'm in there so we are putting the magic solution, which you do not drink, please, into the cylinders, like I was saying, acetone, B12, and transmission fluid over there on the floor. So now that we've mixed it into this little fruit juice cocktail. Would that be fresh? Mm, not too much fly feces, not too little. Basically what you do 
Let's just sort of pour it in the cylinders. Just like that. And it's gonna sit there for, oh, I don't know, about a week. And we'll see how slowly these cylinders drip down. You can actually see a couple of little bubbles here and there. That should tell you that the rings are not perfectly seated, but this will reseat those nasty stubborn rings. All right, so many weeks later, we have come to a point where the top of the engine has been scoured nice and clean. I've put a little bit of engine oil down in each cylinder to help build compression on a first start and not, you know, so the cylinder walls aren't dry. And over here we have the head gasket, uh, or the head, I should say. We also have the old head gasket, and this is the new Felpro head gasket, along with a series of those sockets I was talking about and a torque wrench. Um, they did clean this head gasket. Uh, they forgot to put the lifters back in it, which is quite irritating, but according to them, this is clean. And they machined it and everything, and I did check the surfaces. They have been machined, so, you know, this will work, I suppose. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and stick the actual head itself back into the engine. First, I'm going to put the head gasket back in. I did just go over it with some brake clean to get rid of any excess grease or oils. So it is time now to actually stick the head on. So with enough mumbling and jumbling, let's do that. Well, there's the new head gasket stuck down in place. Now it is time for me to get the head lifted on and stick it straight on, hopefully, without any kind of fumbling or interference. I figure I should show this to you before I put it on, just in case anybody thinks I didn't do it. As you can see, they machined the surface of the head and lapped every single one of the valves clean. So we do have a beautiful sealing surface here to put into the engine and ensure everything goes the right way. Now let's hurry up before the wind takes a bunch of dirt and puts it on everything. As I mentioned, we did order all new um, head bolts and the washers. I'm not taking a chance on stripping those little fuckers out and i ordered a whole set of these triple square bits that have the eight the nine the ten your mama it's got everything i'm so sick of having one or two you can see what happened to these i just got so mad at them um one welded itself permanently into this bolt that's not coming out the other ones i just left out to rust because fuck those stupid things those were terrible at least this is a full complete kelhawk set and these should work appropriately and we will be using the torque wrench so there is a uh, standard we are going to have to do i'll see if i can put it up on screen right now um, that's the torque sequence we're going to have to follow the actual head bolts are 22 foot pounds and you torque them in a sequence and then you torque them 90 degrees one way and then a further 90 degrees to ensure that they are completely seated okay all of the bolts are with their proper washers and torqued down to 22 foot pounds I also did the two sequences of 90 degree turns for every single bolt, and now the head should be snugged down. Uh, if you get the chance, do not use this uh, torque wrench. It is not very good. It's sort of sporadic, so hopefully that's all good. Otherwise, I blame you. Anywho, the head is on now. I'm going to start putting on some various stuff, like, uh, like you can see over here. One of the coolant hoses and some of the sensors back in, and just stuff like that so we can prepare to um, get the lifters back in and then put the cams back in. So let me start on that. Okay, we are back installing the camshafts into the engine. I had to get my lifters back from the person I paid to do the head because they just didn't give them back to me. And here they are. As you can see, uh, we have the lifters. There's a couple of brackets for the fuel injectors in there. Ignore this project car, which will be in an upcoming video. Okay, don't ignore it too much, but Oh, yes. Hold on. Ooh, that should give you an idea of what we're working with. So that's going to be a fun one coming up. But uh, for now, let's focus on the engine. So I have to put all these lifters back in, and then we can begin to clean off the camshafts and put the camshafts back in. Now that all the camshafts are in place, along with the lifters and all of the bearing caps, uh, it is time to focus on timing. Uh, this one will be easy down here. As you can see, I've already mostly cleaned the engine mating surfaces. I still have to go over it at least two more times. But uh, I'm going to time the bottom half of the engine first. And then we're going to come up to the top half, which is much more difficult because you can't get a direct line of sight on it. But luckily we have the timing marks and we are going to do as the book says and advance everything one tooth more or less. Because when you put the chain on, 
and spring the tensioner it's going to retard the timing and that'll mess the timing up so we have to uh, be careful with that so it's going to be really hard to see this i'll edit it uh, in the editing process but right on that flat spot on the reluctor wheel the timing has been advanced to where in that circle the flat spot of the bottom end of the engine bearings is right between the circle and that is just slightly uh, advanced timing which is what we want in this scenario so we have this portion of the cam reluctor timed and now we have to go upstairs and time the two camshafts so now we're up top like i was talking about this is your normal timing mark right here you're not gonna be able to see it it's under this bolt but this line right here this groove is your normal top timing mark where it should be i don't know if you can see this or not but i have advanced it two teeth so we have one and two this is tooth number two and there's actually a timing mark right there see that timing mark all right right there and this timing mark uh like the book says i have advanced the camshaft okay two teeth forward because when i go to put that tensioner on it's going to retard the timing for this particular part of the camshaft two teeth backwards and i I'm not exactly sure on that one. I have the book, but I'm not done timing that one yet. So we have the bottom in time. We have the forward camshaft in time. And now the rearward camshaft is going to be have to be timed right now. It has been many, many hours of trying to put this new timing chain on. And man, I have never had such a frustration when dealing with a timing chain. Every video on YouTube is wrong. The factory service manual has incorrect information. Uh, it took a guy from Indonesia. I found one of those, like, Indonesian Manila in the Philippines where they're just, like, making a bunch of noise and pointing at things to finally understand what I was looking at here. Both of these cams have to be in, in their normal positions. See how this matches here? And I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but this here is your timing mark, and it has to match that timing mark there. These two have to be in their normal traditional positions but this one down here again i don't know if you can see this the link lines up with the little dot All right so a link little dot this has to be uh two degrees that way all right you can't put it straight up and down it's got to be that way and the only video that showed that was some indonesian guy squawking on in a language that i cannot understand uh, but he did do a very good job of manually showing with you know visually showing with the eyeballs because I tried this other guy's video, and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm sorry to say that guy's YouTube channel. Uh, there's no way that when you put that engine back together, it didn't have timing issues because no matter how hard I tried these, they would not line up. Like the timing would not line up with the instructions, both from the factory service manual and that YouTube video. But when I watched that Indonesian guy's video, or again, Filipino, I'm not sure. We are like ocean from Laos, stupid. It's a landlocked country in Southeast Asia. It's between Vietnam and Thailand, okay? Uh, this lined it up perfectly. And as you can see, I'm going to do one crank over of the engine to make sure all the timing goes back together. I know in these vehicles, when you crank it over, this mark actually moves and it scares the hell out of you because of the VVTI. But in reality, as long as the timing marks themselves are where they should be, then you're all good to go. So that's what I'm going to do next. See, this is the kind of crap I'm talking about. Uh, every time I go to do something to this car, uh, this kind of shit happens, you know? The weather is just like, nah, fuck you. Spotted in the water here in Black Rock and Salt Hill, both today and yesterday. You're not fixing anything. <laughs> but uh, it's too bad, really. I, I got stuff to do, so unfortunately this is going to have to happen. As the sun sets, I finally got the timing cover correctly installed. I got that Toyota Seal Packing 103 on everything that ever existed on the face of God's green earth, including my hands, this AC compressor, my other hand, uh, all over the engine bay, just about everywhere, really. On the fender, of course. But what makes me happy is, see that bead that squeezed out? That's a real even bead, and it's on both sides. Not only that, but it's kind of hard to see, but down in that water pump hole, see that real even bead in there? That's a good sign. It means that I did not disturb it. You know, I checked over it before I suctioned it down. I had to align the uh, oil pump and everything went on. So in a day or so, because I'm not even going to think about doing anything else today. Liar. 
um, the oil pump and all of the associated seals I put in there should everything should be dry and that means the timing cover is done the timing chain is done we are no more fiddling in the world of timing now is the reassembly of the actual accessories I am losing daylight pretty quickly and uh, I'm starting to look like Ashy Larry local legend Ashy Larry <laughs> why do they call him Ashy Larry well there's your answer but I need to get this new valve cover which I put on and put the valve cover onto the engine just to seal everything up in case there's any kind of rain or what have you and then I'll cover the rest um, as you can see the timing cover is more or less there all the harnesses are out of the way Fathead the cat makes an appearance ladies and gentlemen hello Fathead I'm sorry my hands are so gross but you don't seem to care oh baby baby look at that pucker hole anyway Fathead I need to put this valve cover back on to protect it from the elements so that's what we're going to do now well, that's just on there for now. It's not bolted down, but it's on there enough to stop anything getting in. Uh, yeah, some people are going to go, What, Jimmy? You're not going to clean this wretched valve cover? No, I'm not. This is a budget thing. I'm not trying to sparkle this up like a diamond. I need it to run, and that is all it needs to do. So that's going to be like that for now. Um, we're getting close to the end of the video here. It's probably just a bunch of me repeating myself and nothing happening anyway. So I must end this nightmare before it ends me and it costs me another 10 years of my life and whatever hair I have left. So we're going to be finishing this up in the next video, uh, putting all the accessories back on, seeing if it even runs. I don't know. We'll check compression, etc., etc. But uh, that'll be for another video. So thank you for watching. I always appreciate it. And I will catch you, and Fathead will catch you, in the next one. Bye. <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> it's alive. It's got a bad motor mount, but it's alive. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. To be contenders. <laughs>